what does an icosahedron have to do with music? I'm going to take you through the process which led me to see an underlying, simple, geometric truth in music. It was inspired originally by John Coltrane's exploration of music as geometry in this drawing he made over half a century ago. We're going to start with the cycle of fifths. You've probably seen before the patterns that can be created by plotting musical structures on the clock face representation of the cycle of fifths. This one is a major scale, C major. This is nothing new and there's lots of examples of it all over the internet. But the ones that are important for this three-dimensional geometric system are the symmetrical shapes. The symmetrical shapes in music are the chromatic scale, which has 12 notes. The whole tone scales, of which there are two, with six notes each. The diminished chords, of which there are three, with four notes each. And the augmented triads, of which there are four, with three notes each. It occurred to me that there ought to be a three-dimensional shape into which all of these two-dimensional planes might fit. So returning to the cycle of fifths, if we move every other note inward towards the centre of the circle, and we then align them with their counterparts in the original circle, we can create the impression of a third dimension. Contained perfectly within this three-dimensional shape, we can see the four augmented triads, along with the two whole tone scales that they form when they are joined together. When we plot the three diminished in this new system, they no longer appear as squares, but as rhombuses. But we can see this as an effect of perspective. And we can translate the image into three intersecting planes. Four corners of each plane are the four notes of a diminished chord. C, E flat, F sharp, A. C sharp, E, G, B flat. D, F, A flat, B. The end result is this 3D graphic. Three planes intersecting. Three diminished intersecting. This presents us with an interesting representation of a lot of the fundamental basics of Western harmony and jazz harmony. The three diminished chords are the flat square planes. Blue is D, F, A flat and B. Red is C sharp, E, G, B flat. Yellow is E flat, F sharp, A and C. Where two planes intersect, on the external crosses, we see some interesting parallels to functional harmony. The crosses contain two corner points from one square plane and two corner points from another square plane, i.e. two notes from one diminished and two notes from another diminished. These four notes, at the points of the cross, make a chord. 
The orange cross you see here is comprised of the notes C, E, G and A. This is C major 6 or A minor 7. The blue square behind it is a diminished chord comprised of the notes B, D, F and A flat, which are the 3rd, 5th, 7th and flat 9th of G dominant. G dominant resolving to C major 6 is a perfect cadence. The same notes G sharp, B, D and F are also the 3rd, 5th, 7th and flat 9th of E7. E7 resolves to A minor 7 as a perfect cadence in the minor key. If we rotate the cube through 180 degrees so that we're looking at the other side of the blue square, we find another cross at the intersection of the yellow and red diminished planes. The notes found on the points of the cross are F sharp or G flat, B flat, C sharp or D flat, and E flat. This is a G flat major 6 chord, or an E flat minor 7 chord. The blue diminished behind represents the 3rd, 5th, 7th and flat 9 of the dominant flat 9s that will resolve to those chords also. C major 6 and G flat major 6 are a tritone apart and they lie on opposite sides of the cube. Likewise, E flat minor 7 and A minor 7 are a tritone apart, found on opposite sides of the cube, with the diminished that represents the dominant flat 9 leading to them right behind them. The same is true for all of the crosses on the cube. All the crosses contain two notes from one diminished and two notes from another diminished. They form a major 6 and a minor 7 chord and the diminished which creates the effect of a dominant flat 9 which leads to that chord is right behind it. But this isn't all. If we move to this corner of the cube we can see three notes which represent an augmented triad. C, E and G sharp. One note from each of the diminished planes. A little further back on parallel corners, again, one note from each of the diminished chords, we have F, A and C sharp. Next to this, again on parallel corners and with one from each of the diminished chords, G, B and E flat. And all the way on the opposite side of the cube from the first augmented triad is the final augmented triad, F sharp, B flat and D. I'm not sure what the ramifications of this are, or indeed if there are any, but it does seem to indicate that the structures of music that we hear and that we perceive as satisfying or dissatisfying, correct or incorrect, consonant or dissonant, resolved or unresolved, are structures that exist in nature and as such they might be seen as discoveries rather than creations of humankind. The very same functionality that we hear can be seen as geometric and mathematical truths that have a lot in common with sacred geometry. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you have, please click like and subscribe. If you haven't, what are you still doing here anyway? Thanks for listening.